Come out and visit with us one more time. I have like goosebumps on the Yes. Old School Paranormal's here in the house. We're visiting again. We're back. Let's get some door action going here, huh? Can you do that thump noise again? Walked in that room and it's, it just it was chilled. Are you aware of that picture that was taken down here? A figure in the, in the doorway? It's like a guy standing in a doorway. Fort Riley, Kansas, home of the Big Red One, Old School Paranormal's third visit to this active military post to try and help sort through 150 years of paranormal activity. Tonight we are revisiting two locations, Building 500, otherwise known as Summerall Hall, which serves as the Garrison Command, and the Custer House. Summerall Hall was used as the post hospital from 1888 to 1948, including when the world was dealing with the 1918 flu pandemic. It was eventually remodeled and became post headquarters. The building's large basement served as a morgue for nearly half a century. Decades of uneasiness in the basement culminated in a crazy paranormal investigation in March of 2019. You can do it. Just a little bit more. Oh my God, it's opening more. You got it. Come on. It's Holy God. Oh my God. Also, in October of 2007, a soldier on patrol in the building took this picture in the old morgue. The figure of what appears to be a man in an old fashioned uniform can be seen standing in front of the morgue door. Some claim that the figure seen in the photo was actually a morgue attendant coming to check on the deceased that lay on the slabs that are still there to this day behind the morgue door. Old School Paranormal's third trip to the historic main post at Fort Riley will give us an opportunity to conduct follow-up investigations at two of the hottest paranormal locations on this active military post. Tonight we'll be conducting investigations at both the Custer House and Building 500 Garrison Command, also known as Summerall Hall. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. The action ramped up for us almost immediately. So we haven't even began our investigation yet, and uh, Kevin and Scott and I heard uh, what sounded like thumps coming from upstairs. Can you do that thump noise again? Is there somebody upstairs? I think we attributed it to the screen door kind of blowing in the breeze outside a little bit. So we butted up a barrel up against that screen door. Well, we thought we still heard footsteps upstairs. Something like 
That's this. Are you here now, Scott? No, I don't mean to settle. If Neil's walking over there, would he be shifting the upstairs? So Scott has taken one for the team. He's going upstairs and checking things out. Neil is back. He was over at the museum side of the Custer house. I just set my camera up and set the hit K2 and a, my rim up there. And Walked in that room and it's it just it was chilled. Stood some of the toys up and spelled some stuff out with the blocks and moved the teddy bear to the rocking horse and, and then we just let it go for a little bit. So the teddy bear's still on the rocking horse thing? Not right now it is, yeah. It was up on the mantle. Nothing up there, Scott? No. Yeah. I looked up in the mirror and just saw myself. It scared me a little bit, but it was just me. <laughs> After having met our hostesses for the night, Darlene and Rachel, we debrief them on what and what not to expect for the night of paranormal investigating. Neither one of them had been on an investigation before. Both Darlene and Rachel are on the board of the Historical and Archaeological Society of Fort Riley. Upon our arrival to Building 500 Garrison Command, we were met by Maggie Ziffer from the Fort Riley Public Affairs Office. Maggie was with us on last year's investigation in this building. This is the door, and I feel like it's coming out more than it did last time. Mm -hmm. I feel like last time it maybe came out to here, and it was slow, then it would do that. But to me, it's feel, I feel like it's coming out further than last time. What we learned from February 2019's investigation was that it was most likely a draft that caused the door to open. We had no explanation as to why the door would not just close, but slam closed. With weather reports indicating the wind at 10 miles per hour from the southeast, very similar to what they were back in February of 2019, the team wanted to see how the door would react this time by minimizing the airflow under the door at the top of the stairs. Then put instruments next to the door to determine what may be opening or closing the door and if it would happen again, like last year's investigation. The opening, sure, that pass it off as a draft. Let's just, we'll, we'll just say it's a draft. Right. Close coming the back. door open. Right. But coming back. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's, that's what we, that's unexplainable. Even though this was Darlene's first time in the basement of Building 500, a friend had given her his personal account of their first visit here. He said the basement was very scary. He said there was like, yeah. they would see like shadows of like someone through here. With equipment set up and the prayer of protection completed, it was time to venture through the very door that a soldier had captured an eerie image of several years ago and begin our investigation in the former morgue in the basement of Building 500. And within a minute of starting the investigation, our periscope detected static energy. So is it dark when it's not detecting anything? Correct. That's weird. You mean extra cold? Yeah. Now see, it just took a step back. Yeah, I'm like There's a step forward. Now. 
Were you cold before? This? No, Probably. not as cold. Now it's like I'm freezing. I have like goosebumps all over. Yes, the I have yes. goosebumps. Yes. But I didn't at the other end, but I do at this Here. end. And I don't know if it's actually temperature or colder. Is there anybody down here with us? If there is, there's lots of ways you can let us know. Were you an employee down here when this was a morgue? And did you have to bring in the bodies on a gurney, put them up on the ledges here? And did you have to cover them with ice until I guess the ground thawed outside enough where you can bury them. But did you used to work down here maybe? We're not here to tell you to leave. We're not here to frighten you or anything like that. We come here in respect and and uh, we just like an opportunity to talk to you if we could please. You can also try to talk to us. We have audio recorders going. If you could tell us a name We can hear that as we listen later. Sometimes if you try to speak, we can hear it live. So I moved, I moved the periscope to the other side of the room. If you're more comfortable, to be on that side. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. I guess you are more comfortable on that side. It's really, really cold over there. Okay. I mean, we Which, had chills. And you lost it with from when you moved from there? Yeah. The yeah, closer I get, it's like all the way up my legs. Yes. Okay. All the way down my arm. So that is fairly close to where I mean. We were standing. We were right where it's right pointing there. right at where you were standing. Yes. Because we're both like yes. stomach hurts and um, I have chills all the way from my chills. toes to my fingertips. Well, what's Goose interesting months. right now is it's kind of just stayed where it's at. I mean, it's not moving one way or the oh. other. Can you move it back to the left or towards the entrance to this room? Nope, the other way. Oh, you starting to move? Yeah. Okay. Come on over. Are you trying to tell us you're here? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Is there a presence over here? In this area? Yeah, it's not as cold. Yet. It's not as cold here anymore. Can you tell us your name? Are you female? Turn it off. 
Yeah. Six twenty six. I, I heard of the loading period. Yeah. Did you guys hear that? Yes. I did. I don't, but I'm freezing. Was today. anybody doing a? Mm, yep. No. That's what it sounded like. Did you hear it, Jen? Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear it. I, yeah. I felt like it came from over to my right. All right, let's. Are you the man who was in that picture taken by the door over there? We leave the body out. If so, can you light up one of these gadgets for us, please? Can whoever made that moaning sound, can you do that again? I'm going to tell you, that was probably the most distinct moan. Are you upset that we're down here? Well, if you'd like us to leave, can you turn the lights on one of these gadgets up here on the shelf? The answer is yes to any of these questions. Please light up one of the devices. What did you hear that? It sounded like a, it was a female voice, kid voice. Yeah. Yes. Down that end. I, I felt like it came from oh, back there behind you, like Steve, back over that way. I thought it came from the other end. I did say okay. I thought it came from that end. From this end over here by me. Mm -hmm. At least three members of the team heard what sounded like a child or a female voice as soon as Neil said to light up a device if the answer to our questions was yes. What is interesting is that not everyone heard it and those who did could not agree on which direction the voice came from. However, unlike the moan a few seconds before, our audio recorders did not pick up any voices. When you moaned, were you in pain? Is somebody in pain down here? Do you want us to try to help you? If you do not want us down here, you need to light up one of our gadgets or devices, make a sound or noise or something to indicate that you do not want us down here. You can't hurt us, but you need to let us know somehow. I think let's try the spirit box again. That seemed to me yeah. uh, initiated that stuff. Yeah. Because we had success with the spirit box just a few minutes prior, we decided to give it another shot to see if we could pick up another response. And we did, right off the bat. What was that? Yeah, what was that? that moan? I heard the moan. There, there was humming. With enhanced audio, the moan or humming was very clear. It could be very well the wife of a fallen soldier or the mother of a child mourning her loss when this was the hospital morgue over a century ago. And you guys didn't hum or moan? No, and we're starting to freeze again. We warmed up. We both really warmed up there that whole time. And now we and have now chills we're again. everywhere. If the spirit needs to do something to let us know the presence, whether it's to make a, de a device go off or a moan or something like that, or even to move something, it takes an incredible amount of energy for them to do that. Maybe a residual, maybe this happens 
this time every day. They, 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 there you go. With no further moan or humming sounds, the team moved to a part of the old morgue we were unable to investigate the year prior due to bats. Because there's one in there. One just went by. Yeah, yeah, Do you there's... see that? There's more than one. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's, like, there's a family. Thankfully, the bats this time around had already been moved or found somewhere else to go. Either way, we had this part of the old morgue to ourselves. Was this part of your morgue back here? part of the morgue. Should we ask that question again? Okay. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> that's right. that's right. Yes. So we take that as this is part of the morgue. Were you a soldier? fight along with Custer when he was stationed here? Are you a nurse? Or a spouse? That's... Or I know a lot of spouses died. Were you, were you a civilian? You have worked here on this post? Maybe you had a child passed away? Can you keep coming back to my voice? Come back over here, please. It's not hurting you, is it? Follow our voices over here. Come this direction, please. There we go. Right. You're coming back. Yeah, are you pointing to the respiratory therapist? I know. That's one thing. And this is yes. following me. <laughs> she works with children and adults that have breathing problems. Lots of children. Maybe you put off that um, that vibe that's in your aura. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you need Darlene to help your baby out? If you need her, change colors one way or the other. If you like her to help or try to help. Wow. Yeah. I've never seen. Have you ever I've never seen, seen it back all the way and then come no. back? No. Well, I mean, it's come back a time or two. I mean, I kind of remember seeing that, but oh. well, else? But what I don't remember is for it sitting forever there, working yeah. its way around, yeah. sitting forever, and then, then coming, coming back. back. Yeah. So again, that measures static. So there was something mm -hmm. in the area, and oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. See. Yeah. Now wave your hands from back there, Steve. So I've got to be. It seemed to light up pretty bright um, when she talked about taking care of the children. Yes. Yes, it did. Yes. Yeah. See, and okay, children. And, and see about children again. This is stuff that you, you can't predict this kind of stuff. You just yeah. never know what's going to happen. So, maybe yeah, how, do you, how do you explain this? Maybe this person was a was a full time parent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or a nanny. Maybe, maybe a nanny. Or a nanny. Or a nanny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. A nanny. Yeah. Love children. I mean, and this is what we were talking about before. We could it could sit there for minutes, too. hours, mm -hmm. but nothing, and then all of a sudden, yep. <laughs> something in the environment changed to do that. Because it was successful earlier, we started another spirit box session. What is your baby dream that needs help? Who is that device pointing at? Is there more than one spirit 
with us here. Can someone talk to us tonight? Who made that gadget light up? Not only did we catch a quick voice over the spirit box, but two other strange things happened. Our audio recorder captured another moan that we did not hear, and one of our K2s lit up during all this as well. Do you need help? I'm not sure what that was. I almost felt like he said no. It was a male voice. It was a male voice. Mm -hmm. 24. I saw the K2 going off there too, Steve. Are you okay? I almost felt like he said no. It was a male voice. It was a male voice. I saw the K2 going off there too, Steve. Are you okay? Okay. Can you tell us who just turned that light on, please? Like I said, it was pointing straight this way and straight that way. And then it was out front for a while when two get two ladies came. But it usually, for the most part, doesn't sit on one in one spot for that long. Are you talking to me now or Scott? Or, do we have your attention? Does Neil, are, if you're a child, does Neil remind you of your grandpa? <laughs> Oh, hey, it does. <laughs> oh, okay. My grandpa must have been a young, strappy dog. <laughs> okay. The last time we start laughing, it started flashing. <laughs> Seriously. Maybe I know. Having a good time too. Do you like jokes? Do you like to laugh? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 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 Doing, last time we were laughing, did the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I mean, I think feel like we always assume everybody's in distress. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Maybe yeah. you yeah. have a good time. Yeah. Since we hadn't yet investigated the door that was the pinnacle of last year's investigation, the team decided it was time to see if the activity would continue. Hey, we're back. Can we play the game open and close the door again? Do you have the energy to do it this time? Can you close that door, please? Just like you did last year? We need it shut. If you were down here with us when we were here last year in March, I'd like to ask that you do the same thing you did then. Close that door for us. Because we had so much success with the periscope, we wanted to see if the device could detect any static energy where the door has been shown to open and close on its own. Do you need a, do you need to save, save up your energy to move that door? There's some items down with batteries in it. You can take the energy from the batteries. Move the door. Are you being shy tonight? Did you, by chance, whoever we we're communicating with over there, follow us over to this side? If you did, you know what to do. Well, I mean, 
Maybe there was a child playing with the door last time. Yeah, playing big blue or something? Yeah. We didn't think of that. We didn't really bring in children into the equation last time. Is there a mischievous child with us? Yes. yes. Down the hall? I've heard it a couple of times. Down that way, right? It, to this side. Yeah. I mean. What have you guys heard? Very, very. Kevin and I heard, um, I didn't say anything. I just looked at Kevin and I pointed my ear. I heard what sounded like a moan coming from. I, I heard it a couple of times before you said anything, but I thought it was my imagination. Mm. Very, very faint. We've been, um, we're on the east side of the basement now. We were on the west side earlier. Had a lot of activity over there. Um, maybe you think there was a, a child or a mother and father we were talking to. Um, respond to laughter, which is very unusual. Um, we were just outside of this this room here, and I was feeling a lot of energy. And came in here, and I filled it again, and then it just went away. So, not sure what it was, but tonight's been completely different than the last time here at, at Fort Riley. So um, hopefully we'll keep on getting some good results tonight. With no activity around the door, we began our move to another part of this large building. But this former hospital morgue had one more surprise for us. Circled in green, you can see that the door at the end of another hallway was clearly closed. Watch what happens next. Holy crap! What? It just won't wide open by itself. Sure is shit, and I just took my camera off. I am not kidding you. Uh, it went just yeah, I heard wide it. open and the door hit. Like fast. Oh it my went, god. Yeah. You are oh, kidding I'm looking me. at you. I just picked it my just, camera up. Oh, you don't have a camera either. No! Kevin. This <laughs> door went <laughs> open. From the, yeah, I just heard that one. Yeah, that one now. I think that one just shut down the other Yeah. Did you get oh, it? Wow. That no. Was super, was <laughs> well, my camera was sitting there the whole time we were over there. Now it was open and our cameras missed it. This is the very door the figure wearing a hat was photographed in front of. Just to look at me and I'm seeing this door going and I thought somebody walked through there. Wow. We repeated our steps and we closed the same doors in the exact same way we just had. We could not get the door to open on its own again. After a short break, it was time to head upstairs to the first floor, where claims of gurney wheels and moans have been reported. So actually, maybe that's why the motion sensors didn't come on. I should probably order to jump back up. Yeah, yeah. The year prior, Old School Paranormal also experienced lights turning off and on by themselves. We placed the periscope in the middle of the hall, at least 100 feet from the team, to see if any energy was present. Almost instantly, the periscope began detecting static energy. Can you move it to the color green? That's the complete opposite side. How about yellow? Let's do baby steps. Or yellow. Changes in the color of the periscope indicate movement of the static energy field it is detecting, not necessarily changes in the amount of energy. What are you trying to tell us? What's interesting to me is, you know, you had said yeah. that off is there, mm -hmm. sometimes it'll blow up. Yeah. I mean, it's cold outside, so it is running a lot. Yeah, the heat's running outside. Mm -hmm. Give us a sign. Please step away from that device so it shuts off.
Can you turn on? Ah, there you go. Oh, it's freezing. Yeah. Ooh, it is cold. Yes. Wow. That was pretty damn cool. We spent another 15 minutes back down in the morgue to see if whoever opened and closed the doors for us last year would oblige us again. Unfortunately, just as a few hours earlier, the door was not moved. One thing we've learned in paranormal investigations, very, very rarely does a paranormal event happen from one investigation to another in the same location. You will want to start on the way back and then work our way. Okay. As our time at Building 500 was coming to an end, we wanted to go back to the locations that provided us some awesome evidence earlier in the investigation. Okay, so we're back. We're hoping to continue our conversation with... Um, There's a little toy you can play with. Either... Uh, the child that was communicating with us before, or the parents. If you are a child, Kevin put out a toy train that you can play with if you'd like. Is there anyone still back here? If it was a child, it might be past their bedtime. It may not be here now. Did you like hearing the laughter back here earlier? Remember Darlene? She's the <laughs> respiratory therapist. <laughs> With her best friend Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're trying to laugh. There's like something lighting now. Yeah. Yeah, it's trying. Like All right, use your energy. Come on, you can do it. Do we uh, frighten you? Or if we frighten you, light up a device or give us some sort of sign. Mm -hmm. Not her whistle. I think mean, kind of the echo. The echo is very Pronounced. deceiving. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'd really appreciate it if you'd come out and visit with us one more time. Our time here is getting short. Yeah, we're about ready to leave. One little dim light. Yeah. We had the last time. Find some energy. You can do it. It feels different this time. Yeah, yeah it, does. it doesn't feel as um, like I don't have goosebumps like I had. What about you? you? Darling, do you have the goosebumps? No, I like, don't. Yeah. So. Our last stop in Building 500 was the large room of the morgue where we clearly heard several moans earlier in the night, as if someone was in pain or someone was mourning the loss of a loved one. But this is the room where we heard the moans, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. We heard, what else was there, like a female or kid's voice? Yeah. Or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It appeared that we had worn our welcome that night in the former army hospital and morgue. After 20 minutes of questions, we received no responses or answers. It was time to gather up our equipment and prepare to move to phase two of our third investigation at Fort Riley's historic main post, the Custer House. It had been 15 months since we had last investigated the Custer House, where we caught one of our best and clearest EVPs. What is your teddy bear's name? <laughs> Was the child who told us their teddy bear's name willing to speak with us again? And the little boy or little girl that talked to us last time we were here, can you come out and talk to us again? Because 
I know you sent your teddy bear's name. Milton's a very cute teddy bear name. Did you have any other animals or any stuffed animals or toys that you had a name for? Okay, two blooping out there. Yeah, it is. So after Milton, of course, what was your next favorite toy? Can you knock it over or move it so we know which toy it is? So you told us your teddy bear's name. What's your name? knock over some of those toys. That would have been awesome if we would have knocked over toys. Well, I, mean, I know. Well, it was real pretty. I told you that was pretty cool, huh? Let's do it again. Just make sure. It's a fun play toy. It's on carpet so we wouldn't have heard it. There's all kinds of toys down there for you to play with. We'd like to watch you play. Show us where Milton is. Where's Milton? Come out, come out. Where you are? Ride the rocking horse. Yeah, I was gonna say, move the rocking oh, horse. Yeah. That looks like fun. I'll bet you Milton would like a ride. Our time here is about up. Really need to see something from you. You know that sound just came from downstairs? No, like a bunch. That, 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 yeah. Who's down there? Make that sound again. Hear that? I'm not. I'm just standing right here. duped by the old swinging in the wind sign.
Since our heart rates were extremely high from what we thought was paranormal activity, the group went downstairs to check if the high EMF from our last visit was still present. Go lower, because it was like three. What? Yeah. What's going on? This is the room where we had high EMF, basically Everywhere. from that wall to this wall. This whole area is full of EMF. Okay. Why? Um, yeah. It is like we have this whole inside of here. Forces of that. Like that. Yeah. That, that, that takes a lot. EMF was like off the charts. Enough, nothing. Nothing. There. There's no, nothing. That's crazy. Yeah, because it went all the way back into that other room back then, right? Yeah. Yeah, it went all, yeah. This is the entire area. Hmm. The, yeah, that doesn't make any sense, Kevin. No. You're the uh, I, electronics. I, I, Dude. That one there does not. Is anybody down here with us? In all, this was a great investigation. Both Building 500 and the Custer House provided us activity that we didn't get on our last visits. However, when this investigation was in the post production phase, a deadly pandemic was spreading across the globe. Little did we know that in a matter of just a couple of weeks, life as we knew it was going to be turned upside down. This will be our last investigation for a while, so we can take care of ourselves and our families. When this is all over, Old School Paranormal will be back at it again. Until then, be safe, and God's blessings to you and yours.